My name is Johan van der Beel. I'm the Dean Principal of uh, St. Fermentius Anglican Theological College in Gambella, Ethiopia. Um, Gambella has a lot of problems uh, with, uh, well, obviously the close proximity with South Sudan. So it is, uh, it is not stable. Uh, politically or um, obviously in, in, in the case where uh, U.S. citizens are concerned, the, the U.S. Embassy is very worried about kidnapping and things like that, so they, they actually post that this is not a safe place to be. We have never felt threatened uh, at any time, but nevertheless that is what's posted and that's what people believe. Um, it, is, it has extreme temperatures. Uh, the hottest uh, that we have recorded here on the campus was 63 degrees Celsius. Um, that was in the sun. Uh, but that is the hottest we've ever recorded. I do believe that it has actually got higher than that before in March. So people don't cope with the heat very well. I don't cope with the heat very well, to be honest. And that's why we run away every March, because March is the hottest time. Uh, the other things are basic problems such as the infrastructure. Uh, water is a huge problem. We, ne we never have enough water. Actually, let me, let me rephrase that. We either have too much water or we have no water at all. Uh, and that's the, the crisis that we're having right now. We have no water. Um, the power source is also limited. So when you're going through these, this period of extreme heat with no power, no way of even fanning yourself, no drinkable water, it tends to put off the average missionary. Uh, the story of the college really starts a number of years ago when the war broke out in the Sudan. Historically, the Anglican Church has only had one church in Ethiopia, and that has been in Addis Ababa, uh, St. Matthew's. But when the war broke out, many of the Sudanese who were Anglican uh, fled across the border to Ethiopia as refugees, and they started churches in their refugee camps. Um, there were about five churches to begin with, uh, and uh, they contacted the Archbishop in Egypt, who is over Egypt, North Africa, and the Horn of Africa, and they said, now see here, we're here, you're the bishop, um, you need to come and see us. So he came down, and uh, well, the rest is history. This church has grown. It uh, is now numbering up just under a hundred churches in a few years. The problem with that is that we only have 15 pastors. Uh, none of whom have been trained theologically. So the problem that the Bishop of the Horn of Africa, who is now Grant Lamarckant, was facing was that none of his clergy were trained. And he had all these churches without clergy. So he realized that he needed to start a college uh, here in Gambella, in the Gambella district or region of Ethiopia. I did come have a look. Uh, we went to uh, a border town called Matar, and uh, I was preaching that day, and while I was preaching, uh, these new air men walked into the church with my pajamas in their hands. And I was sort of wondering, you know, if the heat had got to me or what, what the problem was. But um, uh, it came out that uh, a thief had broken into the car and had stolen my backpack. And they had caught him, and they recovered my stuff, some of which were my my pajamas. So we had to go to uh, the police station to identify my stuff and there was this little boy sitting, maybe 10, 11, maybe 12 years old, as skinny as skinny can be, uh, just skin and bones. And I uh, didn't know where his parents were. He was from South Sudan, a little boy who had run away obviously from the war and was stealing just to eat. So we invited him to go back with us to the church and uh, to have a meal with us and we were feeding him and as we were feeding him the community members of the community started coming in to the tuko and saying to him why are you stealing we are your mothers we are your fathers you come to us we will look after you and uh, one of the ladies grabbed hold of him yanked him out there and she washed him down and he came in looking like a bright new penny by the time we left he was accepted into the community and I was sold on the idea of coming to Gambella. Uh, yes, uh, because of the war in South Sudan, uh, a lot of the people have been traumatized. A lot of the women will tell you that they've lost their children in the war, um, or their husbands. A lot of the children will tell you that they saw their fathers shot in front of them. A lot of them were taken 
into uh, the uh, the army as as child soldiers. Some of the men that I interviewed were actually raped by soldiers. Um, so the trauma you're speaking about here is intense. Um, so we have introduced an ongoing course that deals with trauma healing, uh, where we do a lot of, of the basically the cognitive side of how do you deal with with trauma when it is happening, but also on the spiritual angle, we've prayed a lot with our people and uh, we continue to walk with them through through the trauma and through the healing and through the prayer and, and through the deliverance. So the Africa Bible Commentary is, 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 is such a wonderful tool to be able to give to these young men and women because here they are reading uh, something that has been written by an African just like them and it encourages them because they think that can be me in a few years time. Maybe I can write something like that. Maybe I can write a scholarly article that will be published in a book. And I hope so. I, I think our students are absolutely brilliant, uh, having taught them now for a few months uh, and knowing their educational background, that they've had basically no proper education and seeing how quickly they learn and how quickly they absorb what we are teaching them um, in spite of their lack of learning. Um, it, it is great to be able to hand them tools that will, will encourage them to say, I can do it as well. So we, we are really, really um, uh, grateful for the African Bible commentary. One of the things that I always try and do, uh, if I'm preaching a sermon or if I'm teaching a class, uh, or whether I'm just teaching a Sunday school, is try to understand the people. Uh, and so, you know, you, you pray a lot and you ask the Lord, please lay it on my heart what the, the, your people need to hear because it's important that they hear what he has to say and not what I have to say. And often uh, the, the difficulty when you're dealing with a different culture is how do you frame that in, in, in a way such as, the, you know, that they can relate to, that they can understand. Um, and the Africa Bible Commentary actually does even though a lot of the, uh, the authors are not from Ethiopia, especially not from Gambela, unfortunately, um, there is some part of, of what they write um, that, that is, is general for the whole of Africa. And so their images and some of their examples and the way that they approach questions, especially the, the colonial countries, will approach the scripture in a very, very different way uh, from a country that has been free. A lot of these men and women have suffered, unlike the Western scholars. The Western scholars have, for the most part, uh, been shut up in ivory towers and have uh, basically been interpreting the Bible uh, within the, the context of, of relative peace. Whereas the, the men and the women that are writing in the Africa Bible commentary understand trauma. They understand, uh, and in, in some senses, uh, they understand the Old Testament world very well. Um, and so that's what I've appreciated about uh, the Africa Bible Commentary.